Hey guys, welcome to Hot Topics episode four. We're talking about following Jesus. Yes. Looks like... <laughs> dot, dot, dot. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. So in the last episode, you talked a lot about your experience, the moment that you came to Jesus. Right. I want to talk about now, really it's that point of surrender that you came to. Yeah. That, that everyone has to know that following Jesus is... Sometimes we give people a little bit watered down version of the gospel... That's mm-hmm. like, hey, you can still live your own life, all that stuff. No, this is not a democracy where you get a vote. This is no. a theocracy where he's the king, and you've got to surrender your life over to him. Right. But surrender equals freedom. A thousand percent. Right? So you talked about when you gave your life over to Jesus. Um, not everything was perfect. So mm-hmm. what, how long ago, how many years ago, would you say that surrender moment was? Would that be? Let's. I want to say like... Four four years ago. Yeah, four years okay, years ago. Okay, so four years ago. Yeah. Since then, I want to hit two things in this podcast. What do you but, feel like has been easy for you in following Jesus? And what do you feel like has been the most difficult thing for you in following Jesus? Because I think we all we all yeah, have these different things good. that we're working through. Like for me, now your testimony and maybe other people's, for me, everyone knows this growing up. For me, when I was like 11, 12, I got exposed to pornography. And so that was the thing for me, going through high school Mm -hmm. and committing my life to Jesus. That was the thing that I needed to receive freedom freedom for. But if someone put a beer in front of me today, it would not tempt me. Right. Because I've never had it. I've never been awoken to it in a sense. Mm -hmm. I've never been woke to that. Never woke. Never woke. So, but for you, let's start off with the, the easy stuff. What do you feel like was easy last four years since following jesus a couple things that have been easy uh okay i think a couple things that have been easy for me um was or is really um i would say character transformation so what i mean by that is certain parts of like who i am like my character my personality um those things transforming and, and becoming something that th- they were not previously. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about like, so let's say before where I had, you know, a problem, you know, with being prideful and being, you know, uh, you know what I mean? Um, stuck up, hard headed. I feel like as I've given my life to the Lord and as I've sought him, those things, these certain elements, whether it's, you know, pride or whether it's fear or insecurities, I feel like those things have they haven't really been a struggle in my life. it's almost like they've just kind of fallen off you're a pretty moldable dude at least whenever Thank i you. whenever <laughs> i no like moldable yeah. meaning like when i when i come and if i've got advice for you mm-hmm. or even some sort of like correction or something mm-hmm. never have i gotten like pushed back on it do you know what i'm saying yeah. like you do seem like a pretty moldable guy Thank you. which is yeah. good i don't not everybody has that mentality right yeah. That is one of the most dangerous mentalities, by the way. Yeah. That you can't be wrong. Mm. You will never go anywhere. Nope. In life or in following Jesus. Mm, but nope. Yeah, that's like a rock in a hard place. It's, it's just, bad, man. Okay, yeah. continue. But, that. yeah. So, yeah, like, like I'm talking about, um, yeah, just certain uh, characteristics, you know what I mean, Char- certain things in my life. Uh, yeah, those traits, they, they've they just kind of, like you said, molded and they just become different. And I feel like it's not something I had to, like, <clears throat> like put the you know what I mean put my hand mm-hmm. in the plow and kind of dig and like really work it out. No, it's like the Lord kind of just those things shifted. They transformed. That is time. actually that's that's the important part to point out there that the Lord is the one mm-hmm. who shapes us. Yeah, and sometimes we can feel like it's our responsibility to be better. Yeah, to get better. But when you continually come into Him, He's the one who works on your heart, yes. and He's so kind yes. and loving, and He's not gonna like force you into doing it. Yeah. Right? You yeah. Know? Oh, that's so helpful. Yeah. Okay. Another thing that's been easy since following Jesus. What do you think? So another thing that's been easy. Um, I feel that, uh, something that's been easy um, is um, shifting. This is kind of like a more practical thing. But for me, something that's been easy is um, like converting my input, if that makes sense. Like what is input into my life, whether it's music, you know what I mean? Whether it's like whatever type of media, like it's almost like now um, there's like a filter. Got it. You know what I mean? Like as I've surrendered to Jesus and like I've given my life over, now I'm serving him. It's almost like there's this filter. Oops. There's like this filter, you know what I mean? That, you know, doesn't allow, I don't allow everything into my life anymore. Yeah. You know what I mean? Do you feel like that's easier because you grew up 
in a Christian home where you understood that like everything coming in was good? You know, what what would yeah. you say to somebody who maybe didn't grow up in a home like that? Yeah. Who listens to, you know, some music that's you know, that's that's a lot of trash in it. Right. Who who watches movies that, you know, yeah. there's sex scenes and right. just different things like that. Like what what would you say to those people who maybe it's not as easy so, for them? So yeah, f- um for for that scenario, I and and I hundred percent know where you're coming from. Um, I I would say this. Uh, I'll put in this kind of analogy. It's like, let's say like someone who doesn't watch what they eat, doesn't really have concern for their dieting. They just do whatever. You know what I mean? Three Big Macs. You know what I mean during the week or whatever. You know what I mean? Just goes for it. You know they don't really care. When that person makes a stop and they they you say you know what? Okay, I'm gonna cut off all this junk food and I'm gonna go on meal prep. You know what I mean? I'm going to start right. putting healthy things in my body. I'm going to start taking care of myself. But let's say they do that for six weeks. You know what I mean? They're in this new place in their life. Their their body's physically transformed. They feel better. You right. know what I mean? They're in a better place. Right. When they go back to that Big Mac, it their body responds. Exactly. Their body, body physically responds, exactly. whether it's stomach pains or, you know, headaches or whatever. It's the same way, like, in our lives, just spiritually. That's it. That's it. Just spiritually. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? When you're engaging with God and you're, you know what I mean? You're, you're getting into your word. You know what I mean? You're allowing, you, you, you're stopping the, you know what I mean? The, the junk food, essentially. Right. Whether it's, you know, a certain type of music, certain type of media, you know what I mean? Whatever it is. And you're just engaging you know what I mean? The, with the the things of Jesus, mm-hmm. it's like when you do that for so long, you discipline yourself. It's like when those uh, when the junk food tries to come back, it's like you have a response. Your spirit responds. Exactly. Says, Oof, that's not. Yeah. That doesn't feel good. That doesn't. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? That's not. You know that doesn't sit well with me. Right. And so, whether you come from a background, you know what I mean, where you've been in church or you haven't, it's it's a hundred percent possible for either or to commit themselves. You know what I mean? To um, uh, being disciplined. And saying no yeah. to these certain things, and yes, right. you know what I mean to the things that the Lord has for us. Right, and I and I think what people need to know is that you can't have both and have the best results. Mm-hmm. Everyone knows. I mean, and for for one too, it's going to show after a while of eating whatever you said, three Big Macs a day, right? Like, 100%. I know there was a movie a while a while back called Super Size Me, where the yeah. dude ate McDonald's for, like, what was it, like, 30 days straight or something like that? Yeah, and he, like... Oh, then, and, the, and they were, like, concerned he was going to die <laughs> at the end of it, you know? And, yeah. and we look at that kind of thing, but we tolerate some of it in our life. Mm-hmm. The Bible says, Jesus talked about something. He said, a little leaven leavens the whole lump. Mm-hmm. And he was talking about some of the things with the Pharisees or the church leaders of the day, but he was saying, listen, don't tolerate that stuff in your life because it can contaminate the rest. Right. And I know that for me, since surrendering to Jesus, that actually was one of the things that I loved, hip-hop, rap. I'm not against those genres of music by any yeah. means, but there's a lot of junk in that music mm-hmm. where I, when I surrender my life to Jesus, like it's really not been something that I feel this tug towards anymore i'm not i'm not like man i need a sick whatever i need a sick beat in my life right now i need that i need some i need some major slappage i need a a bop (laughs) (laughs) i I was just thinking of the playlist the the name of the anyways we won't go there oh but um, we'll have to show you that one day but like for me you know, uh, you're right. You do see those results, but it's not the physical body. It's your spiritual mm-hmm. body, in yeah. a sense. Yeah. Sometimes, though, I feel like people can run to that stuff because it's comfort for their pain. Right. Right? Yeah. Where it's more like I'm going through something, and so I end up falling back into this, mm-hmm. or I end up I end up getting into a pattern of this certain sin when I'm going through pain. Yeah. And we have to real. The Bible says the Holy Spirit is the Comforter. Yes. And so, I, you know, one thing, one habit we have to break as followers of Jesus is not running to anything that this world can provide to give us comfort from pain, mm-hmm. but to run to the Lord to give us the comfort mm-hmm. for our pain. He's yeah. the one who made us. He's the one who knows us the best. Right. Obviously, mm-hmm. He is God. He knows all of our thoughts. Yeah. So He's the one we have to run to. Yeah. Just real quick, that is so important to understand that if it comes from the world, it will give you worldly results. Right, right. If the world manufactured it, it's going to do uh, that's good. what it do. Right. You know what I mean? But right. if, you know, like you're saying, the Holy Spirit, you go to the things, you go to God, 
you know what I mean, and you go to the right place, right. And you allow the Holy Spirit to comfort you, you're going to get supernatural results. Right, exactly, you know? exactly. And and maybe for someone in, who's listening, maybe you, maybe you, when when you're going through pain, maybe you jump to a relationship. It might not, it might even not even be an actual boyfriend or girlfriend, but it might be sort of that hookup mentality or, you know, texting somebody or it might be um, something on your phone or, or pornography or, or different music or te- or maybe you just binge watch stuff because you just don't want to think about your current life and what circumstances are going on. But we have to be able to understand that the cycle has to stop. Mm-hmm. The cycle has to stop. We've got to run to Jesus and we've got to let him do some major comforting Facts. in our life. How, how else... By the way, if someone's trying to break the cycle, what would be some advice besides obviously going to the Lord, mm-hmm. maybe spending time in worship, those kinds of things? Yeah. How else would you encourage somebody to break that cycle? Something that I recommend, highly recommend, um, for breaking the cycles and breaking these patterns that you're talking about is uh, accountability. Accountability, like, shoot. Like accountability is amazing. So talk about that word because that's like a churchy word, right? Okay. So, so what, when I'm how would you about, say that? I mean accountability. I'm, I'm just talking about somebody who's gonna ride with you. That's gonna hold you down and make sure that you're going the way you're supposed to be going. Right. Somebody who's gonna stick with you. Somebody, or, or it could be like a group, even like people who are gonna surround you and uh, even like do the things you know what I mean that are difficult, yes. like asking hard questions. Right. Checking up on your progress and seeing. Hey, where were you last month? Where are you this month? Right. You know what I mean? And 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 doing you know practical things um, to help you go and push you to where you need to go. Because you know what I mean? It's it's difficult. You know what I mean? When you're by yourself and you fall. Yeah. It's hard. Bible actually says, "Woe to him who falls when he is alone." Mm-hmm. Yep. Woe to woe to you. Yeah. If you're alone and you're falling, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. It's a it's an, it's a bad place to be in. You know what I mean? But if you got people around you who are are, are going to help you get up, you know what I mean? If, if you got people who are there when you fall, it's easier to get up and right. to keep keep moving forward. Right. Right. 100%. And they've got to be people who are going to run to Jesus with you. Mhm. I feel like if someone this is just good. If anybody's watching this, you want to be a good friend, a good accountability partner to somebody. Um, don't just send them to Jesus. I would say go to Jesus with them. Like mm-hmm. I've had so many times where someone's brought something to me, and instead of just like, well, did you read your Bible? Well, did you worship? I'll take some time to maybe pray with them yeah. and pray with them maybe not just like, two minutes, but like ask the Holy Spirit what he would be saying about this situation, about what they're struggling with. Yeah. And that's more than just like, hey, go get it fixed. You know, that's empathy. That's like, I'm going to try to get into this with you Mm -hmm. and bring you along in this and check up on somebody when you know they're, they weren't doing so good the other day. You know what I'm saying? So I, I wholeheartedly agree that not you know, it's I, I, I've been saying this a lot. It's the picture of the cross. Mm-hmm. The cross is this picture of my vertical relationship with Jesus. But Jesus does not leave out the fact that we need to learn how to relate with one another That's here right. on earth. That's right? right. He put humans on this earth. He 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 knows that First uh, John 1, 9 actually says, if you walk in the light as he is in the light, you will have fellowship with one another. You'll yeah. have a relationship with one another. And so... Following Jesus is not just this thing that it's like me, myself, and I, but a successful follower of Jesus does things with other believers who love mm-hmm. God too. Like yeah. you're going to find them in an atmosphere. You know, people have said that yeah. thing, show me your five friends and I'll show you what your life looks like in five years, right? Yeah. It's that sort of a principle that when you're when you're following Jesus, you need that. Yeah, you a thousand that. percent. And also with that, like it's just so much better Right. Doing it with other people. You know Absolutely. what I mean? Like because God designed it that way, that's the best way. And right. it's the most enjoyable. You know what I mean? It's it's something that isn't like hard like difficult or hard to do and it's like you're hanging your head, you know what I mean? You don't have to right. be, you know, ashamed 
of like coming to people and being like, hey, this is where I'm at. You know what I mean? Like we have to understand we are all people. That's right. We, you know what I mean? We are all working through whatever it is in our life. You know yeah. what I mean? But the common factor is that we already have the answer, which is Jesus. That's good. And it just takes, it's, we yeah. do it together. We walk it out. And over time, you know what I mean? We just yeah. become more like Jesus, more like Jesus, and more like Jesus. Right. You know? That's good. So to close it out, last thing, what's been the most difficult thing? about following Jesus for you in these past four years? Difficult thing. I'd probably say the most difficult thing is um, combating emotions. Got it. Talk about that a little bit. Okay, so probably like when I say that, it's like I, like when you, when you're saved, your spirit, you know, it's right with God. It just right. wants to go after him 100 miles an hour. Yeah. But I don't always feel Right. Like going after Jesus 100 miles an hour every day. You know what right. I mean? Sometimes there, there have been experiences in my life, you know what I mean? Whether like um, I may be going through some, like something's going down in my family. You know what I mean? Maybe I was in a relationship at one point in my life and that's no longer there. And it's like these emotions, become they're so strong and they react. You know what I mean? And they they feel so real. Yes. You know what I mean? Right. It's like, you know, it's, 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 this, it's this confliction because you know... You know what I mean? It's like, you know, like, this is how I'm supposed to be. You know what I mean? Like, you, you read the word and you're like, like, sometimes I read the word and I'm like, I know that, but I don't, like, feel I don't that. feel that. Like, right. I don't see that. You know what I mean? Right. Like, it doesn't, that's not the picture that I'm seeing. You know right. what I mean? And it's like my emotions are completely conflicting with what I'm, what I, what I, right. what I know is to be true. You know what I mean? And so, um, that probably has to be like the most difficult thing, you know, just to yeah. bring to the table that. Oh, that's good. That right and I, and I, I've been telling this to people a lot lately. Emotions will work to your advantage when you learn that they're an indicator and not reality. So emotions. Say that twice, then you yeah, yeah. Then emotions should be an indicator, not your reality. That's fire. Right. So let's yeah. let's compare it to like this. A thermometer says this is what's real. Like this is what's going on. Right. Right. Yeah. A thermostat changes the atmosphere mm -hmm. changes the temperature in the room mm -hmm. right so a thermometer is kind of like your emotions it'll say like you, you could be up you could be down that just kind of tells you where your human side right there's the spirit the born again part of us that mm -hmm. like you said loves right. god wants to be in relationship yeah. your emotions are the things that that tell you kind of where you're at and it could be based on any number of things it could be it could be spiritual it could be you're eating like crap, right? It could be Big Macs. you're not Big Macs. It could be you're not getting enough sleep. You know, like emotions yeah. can do those kinds of things because we are still in a human body, though our spirit is what relates to God. Right. So, so, but then you've got your spiritual life with God, life with people, that's going to be the thermostat. That's yeah. going to push and drive and actually change the atmosphere so good. in the room of your own life, that's if so that makes good. sense. Yeah. And people have to realize, if you don't feel like following Jesus, that's okay. That's normal. But but compare it to a marriage. I, I don't wake up every day, nor does Kayla wake up every day and turn over and look at me, and we're just like, ah... Oh. Right? Mm -hmm. There are days that I need to make a choice to love. Even yeah. though I don't feel like it, right? See, but see, in our culture, that's not even okay. Oh, if I fell out of love, well, mm, jump back into percent. love, right? Yeah. Oh, the grass is greener over there. Water your own grass, mm -hmm. right? Like this is what people need to understand. We've got to take responsibility for our actions and pour into the areas that God asks us to. Mm -hmm. And so, so I think when it comes to being in love with Jesus, number one, you've got to be you. You need to learn your own personal relationship and your your devotion to him. Number mm -hmm. two, you've got to have great people around you. But number three, you gotta not let emotions drive you to your reality. Mm -hmm. Right? I say it all the time. I stand up on the chair whenever I say it, your heart will deceive you. Yep. Don't follow your heart. Right. Yeah. Culture says follow your heart, do whatever feels good. No. Mm -hmm. That's that's what will lead to death. That's right. right. And that's so right. That's right. in closing, say one sentence. Under 10 words, if you could give any advice to one person listening to this, 10 words, and say them slowly, and I'll count them down. Ready? Look at the camera. Ready? Under 10 words. Surrender to Jesus. He'll take care of the rest.
I think that was 10. That's 10? Well, well done. But did you say under 10 or 10? Okay, you said surrender to Jesus. Jesus. He He'll. will take care He'll. of He'll. the He'll. rest. He'll. It's He'll still 10. It's oh, still 10. Either way. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Aaron. All right, that's episode four of Hot Topics. We love you guys. We're doing these every week because we hope that it's, it's a little bit more um, of the practicals of how do I walk this life out with Jesus. And yep. so we love you guys. We'll see you to uh, tune in with us next week at, on Tuesday at Hot Topic Tuesdays. Hand.